all the clouds, they have stories. The Creator plays on the creation, not just to decorate the universe. No. They put in place on purpose. They foretell everything. Like moon, wind, sun, stars, clouds. They tell you what will happen. You must have stories. You must have stories. I mean, it's one of those things for years I've sort of dreamed of doing. What you have is the gallery um, showing Torres Strait, the library showing Torres Strait in the museum as well, as well as the Queensland Performing Arts Centre, um, all concentrating on the Torres Strait. The first time nationally, maybe even internationally, where you actually have an entire cultural precinct um, working on presenting on the one theme. Torres Strait culture is very much a vibrant living culture today and it's really exciting because I know that it will not only be about the art but it's about the culture as well and I think it really sort of gives that sense of time and history for the Torres Strait. Look, I think one of the things we're really hoping for, and I think we will get, is this real connection to communities and Torres Strait Islander sort of communities coming to Brisbane and getting involved in the project and the celebration. So it is the package of sort of community getting together, meeting, sharing, um, performing and eating, and I think that's so exciting. Um, thank you everyone for making the time for coming here today. I mean, again, it is always a bit ask on a Saturday, but I think as you see, everything's really coming together. Um, today was a consultation meeting actually with the Torres Strait local community, because what we actually have here in Brisbane is a community of people from all of the different islands. July 1, we had a meeting last Sunday and Tom was there. So we talk about that. First of July is the coming of the light when the missionaries arrived in the Torres Strait and this year especially is the 140th anniversary of the coming of the light. And we've consciously um, planned it to occur around the 1st of July so it's tying in that sort of cultural historical matter with this project. We want to know who's going to be reenacting yes, with the uh, Eastern Island please if and when the Aero people be coming down. If they can do the reenactment, I'd rather them to do it here because it's 140 celebrations. I think it would still be nice for uh, the local community to, to, to have a presence there. But I think it's good for us to support them. We should entice them all together and make it a big ceremony all at once. Yeah, it's for us, it's our thing, and we need to actually give from our heart. Um, I mean, for too long, I think institutions work in isolation from Indigenous groups so that they present on something to the community, and the community don't feel as if they're actually a part of it. And part of what we're really wanting to do is work together with the community. The community is coming with us on this journey, and we're going on a journey as well, learning from um, the community. And I think it's going to be a huge, fantastic celebration.
time of year, yeah, we've seen a lot of sharks, like monster tigers to hammerheads. But when you, when we get in the water, you have to like respect the, like that, that's their place, you know? And it's pretty dangerous for little kids when they're fishing on the shoreline, you know? It's really, yeah, you have to keep an eye out. by the elders, how you make the gears that you dance with. We got taught a lot of things, like where to find the materials that we need and the meanings as well. So yeah, we learned, we learned all that from like growing up. It's part of everyday living on the island really. Yeah. All the elders, yeah. Yeah. Feel the right to go down there. Represent our people. This little island right here. Just to like let people know about um, indigenous culture, you know. Like mainly the Torres Strait Island. They get to show their arts and culture. But now we've got an opportunity. We're gonna put a show on. <laughs> Most of us grew up on the island. Yeah, it's like paradise for us. And yeah, we've been dancing together since. Uh, we were teenagers, really. <laughs> so, yeah, well, all of us are like cousins, real close cousins. The dance that we do is about the shark and relates to our totems and yeah, how they move. Based on Peedi, it's like it's cruising under the water and all you can see is just black shadows under the water, you know, waiting for the prey. The shark dance is sacred. Uh, it's a initiation ceremony. You know, train young boys to men or warriors. Yeah. That's a, that's a really sacred one. They're learning that old, old dance. They dance with their grandfathers. My father danced the same dance. And pass it through from generation to generation. Same song, same dance. Same action they do. It's important. Hello. Uh-huh. Yeah, we're feeling excited. Ready to rock the show down there. We're gonna turn some heads. Yeah, for sure. <laughs>
another beautiful morning, Lord. You give us another beautiful morning to go to work. I just pray you bless myself, my wife, my children, all my grandchildren, all the other families from Torres Strait right down to the mainland. My secret is God. God is good. He give me the talent to do my art. You see the land, you see the mountain, the trees, the sea, the fish, God creation. The birds, they're singing out in the morning, God creation. Everything. That's why I serve him a lot. I work from Monday to Saturday. Sunday, no working. It's all about where I come from, Danley Island. And everything I do is from over there. It's always in me. One day I'll go back again to Danley. You know, before I start to make my other vow, I always sing. And the song I always sing is, uh, it's about the island where I come from, Danley Island. It's called Eru. from Danley. My father, my father taught me a lot of things. But he passed away, see? I, I still got memory of him in me. Still today, anything I do, I think of my dad. And it is a lot of my people how to dance. As I grew up, I only start dancing when I was in Cairns. I only start making this other fact, in Keynes, so once I, I formed a dance group, I need to do that. By thinking back what my father doing all the time, I said, well, I think I can do it. The same material on the island, same material in Keynes, so I went to have a look for it, I find it. I work with a lot of bamboo, and bamboo make a lot of different things. So that's how I create all my art. This is Dari address here with the handmade sack in front. See, see the face of the shark? It's gonna be a warrior headdress. Because he's a dangerous one, the shark. We call Bezam. Handmade shark. It's my totem. Very important to me because uh, it's been handed down. Like from generation to generation, it's for us to know. And when we got totem, like, we don't go and kill the, the, that creature. We don't do that. We always look after it. This is the knife I start my art of first time on this Stanley knife. One of the best little knife. And see, I started with this. I had blister on my thumb from pushing it in and out. I think I was the first indigenous fellow work on the building site with all the non-indigenous brothers. I see the tools they're using all the time. I always think to myself, one day I'll have all the tools. First work I saw, I bought my Zixo straight away, but that was it. I stopped using the Stanley knife. And ever since that, make all different artwork and I start to sell, start to sell, buy, sell, buy. That was it. Successful at last. Well, I am a full-time artist from Danley, and I enjoy it. I love it more than I stand on the building, pick up the hot steel. This is here, see, you can see for yourself. I'm in the shady spot, and I can sit here all day. I've been doing this for nearly 
30 odd years, no? It's a long time. You know, those work we are sent down, well, after all the hard work I've done, it's one of the things I'm looking forward to, but I don't see it. How are the things set it up in there? <laughs> Should have worked there and not to make those pieces. I can't wait to go down the scene. I, even those Alag masks, how they set it up. These are not the masks we celebrate every day. On a certain time, first of July, you celebrate that. The coming of the light. The gospel came to Taurus here on the first of July. Stanley was dark. People was killing, killing, slaughter, whatever, feast. And when the gospel came, everything stopped. The missionary, the London missionary came to Torres Strait. They traveling on the boat called Surprise. Which when you come to Danley, he said, I am the light of the world. And I'll show you something better, bigger, greater. The light shine through the water, touched all Torres Strait people, all the land, and everything, everybody dropped a weapon. And that was it. You see up there? He sent me here to tell you, no more killing. So he dropped the weapon, break all his bow and arrow, everything, drop everything, and he said to all his people, no more fighting, no more slaughter of anything. That's it. It's all God's idea, not mine. He gave me the idea to do all this. Like I come in, I have to say my prayer, come in. When I finish, I thank you for the day. Fill me with the spirit and I speak to you. Hallelujah, the joy of the Lord is my strength. You know, I don't have a city lifestyle, you know, I come from the islands and now I'm starting to grow in the city life now and starting to learn the first time. No, I didn't come down south for, you know, thing, you know, I came down south to actually learn something and gain something because, you know, I wanted to be an artist. Started down here in 1994, came down trying to learn how to dance, contemporary but I was more inspired by the traditional dance of our Torres Strait Islanders, trying to look back to our culture more and draw more attention to it. You know, it was really hard to come down south because you had to get permission from parents, even though you're still over 21. And especially for my mother, who's, she's very strict. It was okay for dad. We can always get yes a lot from him, but you know, go to mom, it's like no, you know no way, you know. So dad had to try and convince her. The next train to arrive on platform one goes to museum via town hall. So it was a successful permission. So I had my journey. And today where I am now, you know, I'm working on my own and, you know, working hard and always remember them, you know, and saying, well, you know, thank you, mom and dad, for this, you know, whatever, I've achieved something, you know, because of, of their answer, you know, saying yes, you know. And, you know, it's something for me to be able to go back, you know, and share that with, you know, other young, young people, you know. You know, I never thought I'd come this far, you know. I thought you'd go back, you know, to TI and probably standing on the wharf or the rocks fishing, you know. I kind of go back home and kind of think like that, you know, looking at my niece and nephew and thinking, you know, I wonder what they're thinking about and, you know, so I wanted to create something, you know, so that way they can be inspired as well. My work is kind of in a good shape. Uh, it's a lovely story, dance uh, of the wind that makes up the season you know, in the Torres Strait. It's a great place to actually work. Sometimes 
get to sit outside in the sun and just sit and be silent and just take everything in. Try not to be too mental. It feels like I'm on Thursday Island, you know, wharf, TI wharf, and you know, you have one island on that side, but it's not actually one island, but it's just a, a memory thing. The company is touring up to Brisbane for its first premiere season in Brisbane. I'm kind of overwhelmed, you know. There's many ways, I think, you know, an artist could tell their stories about this win, but in a different way. And you kind of see these, these land and sea and sky change. So I kind of, wow, this is something unique, you know. This is, then I start to remember that uh, how mom and dad used to talk about this win when we were young. For us, we were like, well, we can't see the wind, you know, we can see the tree blowing and branch breaking, so what's that, you know? But for them, they actually see it and show it to us. So I was kind of like, oh, wow, this is, this is kind of cool. So I kind of remember them saying, you know, I'll try and do this in a contemporary style, in an abstract way. Say, say, say. Cookie. Naigai. Sake. A lot of these women uh, have their own language group as well, so I've chosen the Kalalagoya language, which is uh, the Mabiok language. The four winds are Zay, Kuki is the monsoon, Naigai is the north wind, Sagar is the dominant wind. So those are the four winds that makes up the season. Each wind have their own character, you know, and I think it's, it's a wonderful thing to be able to see and to describe each wind. This wind doesn't stop, it keeps blowing, but it's amazing to see which wind comes through. And that's how my parents see them and show us and point out, look. This has always been, you know, a talk thing, you know, passing on, passing on. You know, I think the Torres Strait Islander have a very unique way and mysterious way of how they tell their stories and how it's been passed down as a generation. So these wind are a generation thing. And, uh, I've created a story through my parents, but through a dance form. So I'm kind of glad that, you know, mom and dad shared that with us. I kind of like to, you know, tribute, to, you know, to them because uh, there's a present, you know, of both of them on stage of, you know, with me, you know, as a storyteller. Because for me, I, I, I see their eyes. It's, it's their journey going through. And, you know, in the end, you know, sometimes, you know, there's moments where, you know, I was just in tears because I, I knew, you know, I said, well, you know, mom and dad, you know, thank God, had a chance to, to remember how you used to talk about this win. And I've always had their presence uh, through me, uh, through, you know, since they passed away, you know, I've always carried them on me. And, um, and I think, you know, that's their blessing for taking me this far and, you know, and sharing something back and showing something back, you know, to thank them for giving me a bit of a knowledge from them and sharing that out, you know, for people to understand how important these wins are and how important they are to me as well.
when we were little, we had the bedtime stories. I'm sure the, you know, the storytellers knew what they were doing, but we didn't know what, what was going on. It was a teaching, you know, that was our classroom. Eventually, when I decided to you know, pick art as a career, I thought, what am I going to paint about? Or what am I going to do? Um, so I thought, oh, yeah, I remember stories. So what I did was straight after high school, I revisited the elders, and I actually recorded stories. I'm on tape, and um, I still have them today. The more time I spent with elders, the more confident I felt. And just listening to those stories again really sort of uh, brought me back to when I was little. It's the main sort of motivation behind what I do, I guess. It means a lot to me um, being, you know, a storyteller or an artist from, from my island community because um, you're not just an artist. You, you have to have a broad knowledge of cultural information to, to support your practice. So in terms of um, interpreting something, I feel that I've, uh, I've been blessed by the elders to, to, to interpret, basically, or to translate. In our language, we call it warupau'u the echo of the drum. See, the, the gift was beaten long before my time. And me, myself, I'm just the echo carrying on the, our culture and um, promoting it through art. Warupau. That's how I see it. And um, that's why I do it, really. Yeah, to, 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 to continue that, yeah. Hey, kuki au kuli san piti nanaman kuki nu paipa nu paipa lagi ae. My daughter, um, she knows, you know, 30 plus songs. The aim is to make sure she has a good knowledge of singing. We don't speak our language every day. So I thought that the best way to make sure that she'll have knowledge of language is through singing. I think this is the, this is the, the core, the language. Um, from that, you can branch out to anything you want in culture. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to it. I mean, you know, when we interpret it into language, lag, mal, adapar, in the Western Island language, land, sea, and sky. I think it's the perfect title because um, it, it, it's us, really. That's us and um, artists coming from, you know, the islands. That's what we are, that's what we do. Everything we do, everything we try and create through art, those three words really capture what, how, what we're trying to explain. So, yeah, it's, it's, it's going to be a privilege, privilege to be a part of. I know there's going to be some of my big prints in there. I think there's going to be three to four, maybe five big prints. And I think it's, it's going to be the best event to really show Torres Strait printmaking, like, you know, we do really large blocks and we do traditional designs. And I mean, it's already talked about going to be the biggest Torres Strait, you know, Islander exhibition. Just for people to see those who haven't seen, you know, they've only seen it in newspapers and stuff. You know, they'll appreciate us more, I guess, as artists trying to promote our culture, yeah. So definitely really looking forward to it, yeah. I usually only carve at night. If I was carving a specific story of, of, of warriors or, or you know, um, um, hunters um, from, from the past relating to Badu, then I'd, I'd definitely carve at night. I feel that I'm a lot closer because it's, it's kind of different here living in the city because you've you got the traffic and it just sort of distracts your connection with the, with, with the, you know, spiritually. So that's how I really work. It definitely connects you back to your island. When I'm carving away, when I'm working, I'm, 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 I'm singing in my head. It helps me, you know, it makes you feel really wise and, you know, especially when I think in language, I suppose thinking in language that I don't actually think about what I'm doing, I just do it. I get into a rhythm, into a zone, but because my mind is, you know, in language, yeah, I'm more focused. I've studied a lot of artifacts, a lot of designs on ancient artifacts that I've seen throughout collections. You sort of get used to the patterns, and as an artist, you sort of uh, create your own and still have that sort of feel of the same designs, my, what my forefathers did. That's why and how we still label it as traditional patterns, because it's coming from the heart, from us as Torres Strait Island people. Being a Torres Strait Islander and following in my forefathers' footsteps, yeah, it's definitely traditional patterns. Um, but I don't consider myself as a printmaker, we're carvers. Because we're naturally we carvers, our forefathers were. You know, we, we're proud of, you know, what our forefathers did, so we sort of carry on through this, yeah. Most of my carvings are all, are all related to 
before Christianity came, before any European contact, because I really like um, the ancient culture, and I feel that these designs are from that era. It's the songs and the ceremonies or the rituals in the, in the time of darkness, we call it, before Christianity came. That, those are the things when I think about that really gives me a buzz, yeah. Really connects me, yeah. Because I'm personally, like, I'm not a, I'm not a Christian believer. Um, because um, personally, I think that I've, you know, my culture's been here long before we were introduced to it. And um, we have different beliefs um, connecting to totems and the land, sea, and sky in our own cultural way of thinking. Yeah, it's a different feel altogether. So I think about time long before, um, before, you know, my ancestors saw ships or planes going by. Well, I was born on the T.I., grew up on the T.I., uh, at home, yes. Yeah. I've travelled all over and I've seen different seas. I've dived in the Timor Sea for quail shells, dived partly into the Indian Ocean, all around the uh, Tiwi Islands, dived around there, Gulf of Carpentaria, dived over Papua New Guinea. Yes, been to Japan, been to Hawaii, been to LA. Home is here. <laughs> it's always been home to me. It's always special to me. Torres Strait. Once I see that blue water, uh, I just think to myself, I am home. <laughs> that sets me on fire. I love you, my shimmering blue. I love you, my shimmering blue. Well, I uh, perform at the Wanglai Hotel in the restaurant. And these flowers that I'm picking now, they're to go to decorate the tables in the restaurant at the Wanglai Hotel tonight, Wednesday night. It works both ways for me. It's, uh, it keeps me in practice and it uh, makes the uh, patrons, the customers there, I put a smile on their face when I'm singing. It makes everyone happy. It's good to see smiling faces. This is what I tell the young musicians when they ask me. 
I tell them we are, the, we are musicians, we are here to put smile on people's faces. What do you reckon, fellas? And they all yell out, yes. <laughs> oh, I feel, feel happy inside. They get a special glow inside. People are smiling and makes me feel that I'm doing something right. Frangy Panny. Frangy Panny flowers. I'll have to write a song about this flower, Frangy Panny. Yeah. When I was a young fella on the pearling vessel, I'd always had a guitar on board. You're out at sea about three or four weeks at a time. You're looking at salt water, sea water around you, day in, day out, night and day. <laughs> it's a good change when you're coming to town. When you're coming, you only have five days' break, and you're out to sea again. And uh, I'd always look forward to coming in. Fly me to the moon and let me play among the stars. Let me see what spring is like on Jupiter and Mars. The girls are here. Oh, the TI boys are back in port. Let's make a party. <laughs> so we go to this party with a guitar. <laughs> that was it. Good fun. Being a young fella, teenager, oh, you, you try to sing as best you can, you know. <laughs> try to win a heart. <laughs> I love you. I love to watch this out, no? A mate of mine, David Collinson, he played sax and clarinet in a four-piece combo at the Hotel Darwin. It's in 1956. He heard me singing at this bar. He said, hey, mate, you don't sound too bad. He said, would you like to come up? When we have a 30-minute break, you sing a few songs. You know, we, we can't pay you, but, uh, you know, you'll get free refreshment and free supper. That's when I started singing for my supper. I still do. Nothing's changed. <laughs> oh, good. Thank you, my girl. Very true, very short. Love Wales. Okay, right. I've been to I've been to New South Wales. Thank you. Makes no difference where I go. I get those old. I used to sing at the Hotel Darwin in 1956. The audience found out that I was from TI. They always asked me to sing old TI. Every time I sing old T.I., my beautiful home, I get homesick. So when I had the opportunity to, to come back home to T.I. as a pearl shell diver, I said, yes, please. I took it with both hands and I said, yes, please. Going back to T.I., back to the place where I belong. Ain't no dragon gonna get me. As long as I have you. Everything that I do is for the Torres Trace and my people up here. And it's always been home to me. I'm proud to be a Torres Strait Islander. I think I'll pass on here. <laughs> At the cemetery there, when they put me down, I'll get someone to sing T.I. Blues.
I don't want it to be lost. The history of the place, and it, it comes to me some, very easy because I live here and I work here. When I'm doing my work, when I get sort of a bit tired, I just stop, go out and get the hose, hose my garden, just clear my head a bit. I'll go and pull some weeds and then come back. So it bounces off, you know. It just, just, just my life. That's how it is. Uh, it just makes me. Rosie. <laughs> I live with nature. I've got an open home. Birds fly right through. Butterfly here flying in. My inspiration comes from my garden and my culture, and it comes from the sea. You know, the land, the sea, and the sky is just here, and so it just came the three works that I did for Goma just came to me. I love carving, it's just natural. The tool's going, it's got a mind of its own. It's going, I'm going with that flow. So it's having an initial design there and then the carving tool does its own thing. And it's mainly the men do the carving, the women don't carve and I've taken that on. I've taken the carving on, I've sort of broke that barrier. Okay, this is a table where it's all been happening. All very exciting, I'm so relieved it's all done. Can't wait for my three cloths to be hanging on that wall. Can't wait to see it. Having it at Goma and, and having it in their collection, you know, it's unreal. It's every artist's dream that's preserved now for the generations to come. So it's very important that we tell the right stories, the true stories. And that's what I've been doing and still am doing and always will be doing. They're hand carved and hand printed. The first title is Torres Strait at War, and the second one is Sea of Plenty, and the third is Shipwrecks. So, this one is like the shipwrecks. I want to tell that story of the shipwrecks and how the headhunters were here, and you like if you get shipwrecked while well, you're at your own peril. <laughs> They will probably lure you in and make friend with you and then we don't know what happens after that. I've got to show you this one, this is my dad's. He's got his hat, his name, Acting Sergeant Ali Aware, and um, his um, number and the rate of pay. This represents my mum. She had my second elder sister in the wartime and um, that symbolises her and all the other mums that was left on the islands when their husbands and fathers came here into the TI to serve the Australian Army. And this is my uncle. That's him climbing the coconut. And you can see the Japanese plane above, but they're flying to um, Horn Island now. That's where Horn Island was bombed. Our stories are very important because it preserves our culture and I've got to share it with the world. People change around us, but putting it down at that time, and that day, that year, they're sealed for time, you know? It's archived now, that's it. To get there and be there, and that's gonna be, I know it's gonna be unreal. Just can't wait now to pack my bags and get on from that ferry and go over to Horn Island to the airport there and get on that plane.
noticed of uh, different color. So I crushed them. I crushed all the stones to create my colors. Then I used uh, dried pandanus fruit, dry one, like brush. I used them for my brush. I used uh, clam shell, a small clam shell for my con paint containers, mix them with uh, salt water. I paint on uh, rocks, then wall. When I left school, I was a teenager, so I made all the paintings on paper. Some of my relatives bought some of my paintings for just a few dollars. Uh, in 1968, Mrs. Laurie came in. I was about in early, early 20s. She asked me to make all the paintings for her book entitled uh, Myth and Legend of the Torres Strait. So I made lots and lots of paintings. I love painting because painting tells a story. Before I start painting, when I face the white canvas, I already saw the picture in that canvas, that white plain canvas. The picture was already there, the complete picture. Something like the clouds, the pictures at the uh, art gallery. I don't have to go out there on the beach and copy all the clouds. No, I just sit here. I just sit here and I paint the clouds to see everything. Just from this table. <laughs> all the little pictures I use at school, primary school for the kids. They all tell you about the weather. You see the moon like this. Land. In Miriam, they say, Meb, Meb is moon. Wagem, Meb, Wagem, Eraski. Why that moon is land, Eraski? Because the wind will be blowing next day. But when the moon will be like this, not slant but straight, the wind will stop next day. It will be fine next day. When you see rain cloud coming, and suddenly it stopped, it changed into this one here this sort of cloud. We call it in Miriam, Deutepti. All the cloud, they tell you everything, what will happen on the next day or next week. 
next month. All the clouds, they have story. I, I think if I, if I saw all my painting all framed up and hang on the wall, I will think about my uh, outdoor studio. <laughs> I probably said tears, think of my studio. Yeah. Going down to Brisbane uh, to see the exhibition itself and also to meet some of my uh, fellow artists. I will be very excited to see them. Every island will take part and it will be a great time when we meet together to share all the culture. Artists have come in from the homeland to join with us on the mainland. So this is just a coming together of families. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Tonight we're having a, a dress rehearsal for the Voices for the Light Choir. This choir has been formed with the Torres Strait Islander community on the north side, the south side of Brisbane. Because I think nearly every Torres Strait Islander in Brisbane is doing something for this opening weekend, I have yet to have everybody rehearsing in one place. And Saturday night, it's the performance night that everyone's going to be in the one space. I guess that's going to really try my conducting, isn't it? To see whether I am a real conductor or not. <laughs> getting together, having, um, <laughs> celebrating, um, having good time. I actually think people are just reconnecting back to the Torres Strait and reconnecting with culture and tradition, with food, music and songs. Uh, it's people catching up with each other, um, families who haven't seen each other for a long time, and it's just impromptu dancing that's happening. It's going to be very interesting compared to tomorrow and the weekend, which is going to be very scripted and very down to the second.
People demonstrates Torres Strait art, music, and performance across an exciting range of forms and is only growing from strength to strength. Only the very tip of the iceberg that Torres Strait people, art, and culture has to offer this state, this nation, and indeed this world. I feel happy inside. I feel great. I never thought I'd see a day like this that we'd be here performing you know, with our culture like this. I never thought that would happen. It's a, a happy surprise for me it's to see how far we've come. Dance to a hula tune. We had a hard time, very hard time, because we went through a lot. We say welcome to the Taurus Street. Welcome, everyone. Woo! to see them dance, they pick up, they go, that's a culture. If we let it go, it's not gonna happen, so we gotta teach the young people to get it back strong and keep it going strong. We're very proud of what is happening here today. So strong, outside and inside here in the gallery. I know what culture, culture is all about. I just love it. I love my culture. Like listen to the singing now, you know, I get wood bumps, but uh, I don't know what to say. It's, be too much here, you know, it's uh, crying inside I see the work. Not only my work, everyone else. We should come together, we put everything together to be one. The artwork behind me is called Family Tree, and the idea of it is to uh, represent, uh, I guess, the complexity of what a family is. Um, 
next. So as you go vertically up through it, um, it hits on the six generations prior to myself and then the generation in front of me, which is my children. So you'll see it on most islands. You know, when you come onto the beach, there's a lot of trees that have these, these boys and um, hanging off them and glass floats. And they're really beautiful sort of accidental installations. And I think just from going back and forth as a kid from Brisbane to uh, the islands, I used to think these things were amazing and beautiful and sort of project stories onto them, I guess. Obviously it's about lineage and, and bloodlines and, and where country comes from and how we connect back. The idea of that is to give an understanding of, I guess, where I can lay claim to, where's my, uh, where's my country in the whole scheme of things. So it's uh, part of an uh, identity issue as much as anything. The, the definition of people in terms of blood quantums is something I utterly reject. You, know, you either identify as being an islander or as an Australian, or but you, you know they're not exclusive things. You can be, you can definitely be both. For me to engage purely in a traditional set of values would be, it wouldn't be right, and, and I'm not best placed to do that. But at the same time, I need to be close to people like Alec Tapati and these guys who have immersed themselves, who live back in the islands, who hold language as the key of identity, which I agree to. Um, having access to those guys for guidance is really important in helping me sort of go forward. And I think between the two poles, we've got the spectrum covered, but without one foot in our past, it's, uh, you know, we're a bit, bit rootless. Preservation is one very important thing that, you know, we want to preserve all the information about our culture so it doesn't deteriorate. And also um, recognition, we want recognition as, as a unique culture, you know. I mean, we're Melanesian people, seafaring people, but we want to be recognised as a unique culture within the Melanesian people as well. We're a minority of people, the Torres Strait Islands, nobody knows that we exist. I mean, we've got so much to give and offer in the way of visual, in the way of performing, in the way of storytelling. If I don't tell it out and show the world, well, I don't think I will survive <laughs> because it'll be just eating me inside. We all do it together. I and mean, all our stories, when you hear the others, we're all interwoven, you know. We've all got the same goal we're aiming for and travelling with works and exhibitions. We're always teaching, talking, sharing. And as artists, that's all we can do, our little bit, in keeping the tradition and the traditional stories going. Uh, I think the, the whole precinct got it absolutely right in understanding that this wasn't a five minute opening for dignitaries. This is actually a celebration and a, a setting that goes on for the entire weekend. I mean, it's fantastic, it's a completely social event. So and just to be able to sit in this space between the two buildings here and do what we do up home, which is just to sit, talk, watch life go by and you know, eat, eat food, it's kind of pretty good. I think it's also give us the confidence to share our culture as well and be able to nurture others so that they have something there too that um, they just don't want to bring it out but it's, it's up to them when they're ready just like me you know I'm starting to build myself and build that confidence because I want to share my culture and I think it's good that we started to educate ourselves as well as a Torres Strait Island to be able to share our knowledge as much as we can. For me to, um, and I encourage every artist to stay connected with the, you know, people at home, regardless of where you live. Like it's an important. I think it's a very, very important to have that connection, there. because obviously, you know, you, your work talk about your island, your, where you're from, your growing up, the upbringing, whatever. And you know, no place like home, like they say. Oh, this weekend has been wonderful. Just overwhelming because all us artists here, seeing families here. Just wonderful, had a brilliant celebration. You know, it's an incredibly hard thing to be away from what you'd nominate as home, so. The place I do want to be is there, but it, I can't. I've got my heart there, but it's in my head and my hands and everything else is down here doing what they have to do. It's part of an orbit, so I know I'm always going to come back to it, I'm always going to come home to it, but without a doubt, I think about it every single day. You have tasted the fruit of the Wangai tree. 
One day, you will come back to Torres Strait. to the Taurus Street. My Mkidet Curry Tar Able Taurus Kessem. My Mkidet Curry Tar Able Taurus Kessem. We say welcome to the Taurus Street.